The issue of race in this case has been a hot topic since we learned the names George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin, an unarmed teen dressed in a hoodie carrying a fruit drink and a pack of Skittles versus Zimmerman, a neighborhood watch leader with a gun. And with a not guilty verdict and more charges possibly in store for Zimmerman, civil charges, perhaps even federal civil rights charges, the issue of race is front and center once again. Joining me now, attorney Mo Ivory, host of the Mo Ivory Show, Buck Davis, a diversity and inclusion expert, and David Webb, co-founder of the NYC Tea Party and host of the David Webb Show on Sirius XM. Welcome all of you. David, let's start with you. A mostly white jury, all women. Does Reverend Jackson have a point? No, he doesn't, because he'd like to inject that there is a problem with white people making a decision on the evidence versus black people making a different decision on the evidence. What we're talking about here is not a cry for justice and due process, but a cry for justice the way he and, frankly, those that want to play into the race narrative would like this to play out. The fact is this is a tragedy. I wish those two had never met. I think most Americans who are rational do. But here we have a case that was prosecuted in the courts, went through the system, and was decided by a jury. And that's how our system works. Jay. Buck. Oh. Buck, well, Mo, you know, you want to jump in? Go ahead. Yes, please. Um, play into the race narrative, David. When doesn't anything play into the race narrative? For you to say something like a, a jury of African Americans wouldn't have thought differently about uh, evidence that was presented, of course they would have. Every How do you know every they juror would have? comes into a case with their experiences of their and they, life and they are what capable is going of on. Making and no matter a what, excuse me, decision. no matter what you want to say about it, they come in with their own experiences to decide what the evidence at, is presented according to how they feel about it. That but, is why we work so hard to pick juries. Yeah. That is Mo, why we try to make Mo, a jury. Let me, let me, Mo, let me jump in for a second. Mo, let me jump in for a second. How exactly, what exactly would an African-American jury, in your view, and this is all obviously hypothetical, how, what evidence would they have looked at differently. Uh, African American jury might not have looked at Rachel Rachel Gentile and judged her the way everybody was judging her. It wouldn't have been about her language. It wouldn't have been about her tone. It might have been just about the facts that she knew that day. An African American jury would have looked at a lot of the evidence including what wasn't done. What was started from the first moment that investigators pulled up on a dead 17 year old African American boy shot by what appeared to be a white man. It would have all been different. So I just I think it's ridiculous to act like there's no race issue here. We go into our court of law, we just look at facts and we make judgments. The justice system has never been about facts. It's facts plus what you think about the things that happen in our country, your experiences, what you've learned. So you bring all of that into a courtroom with you and onto a jury. So please stop pretending like this is not well, about you know, race, Mo, David, because Mo, it you, is. You present, you present the interesting argument that everyone is only subject to their experience when making a decision based on the fact. Now, most people watching this will look at that and call it what it is and attempt to get an end result that you desire. There are blacks and no. whites who make decisions on juries in this country on a daily basis that are fair. And absolutely. they may not be First of all, fair I was to not us. saying that no, every you, decision so is you, unfair. So you can't say I'm absolutely because you bring your experiences you're... into the courtroom. And, and African Americans an have different experiences that. across the board. And so I'm saying that don't discount that you bring your life experiences, what has happened to you, into a courtroom. It is not so um, just all about, I love the argument. Well, it's just our, jur our justice system. Our justice system is broken, David. That is why a man our can walk away also murdering a 17-year-old kid I wanna, and I just get away with it. It. Let me jump in Mo, for a second. Mo, I can tell, I can tell you guys is Dave, don't do the emotion here. thing. This is not about emotion. I'm not talking from an emotional. I'm talking about the facts. And I love Mo, how. Can I yeah, jump I in? Love Mo, speaking from an it's emotional point of view. It's all sudden about the emo, It's always about the emotions when you're talking about the real situation. See, this is the problem with people having people on a show who have their own radio shows. They're used to, <laughs> they're, they're used to, to, to having all the control. I Buck, don't have, I don't have poor, mine, Jay. Poor, little Buck, poor little Buck. Let me go to you for one second. <laughs> President Obama released a statement a short time ago about the verdict in this case. And it said, in part, the death of Trayvon Martin was a tragedy not just for his family or for any one community, but for America, 
I know this case has elicited strong passions. And it goes on and on. But there's, there's one particular part I want to read to you, which is, we should ask ourselves if we're doing all we can to widen the circle of mm -hmm. compassion and understanding in our own communities. How do you interpret mm -hmm. that? Well, I am deeply disturbed by what I have been seeing, specifically with African American folks online and what they've been tweeting and saying in social media. If you look really closely at their words and you look at the meaning in the words and you look at the feeling underneath that, you'll see the, and hear the feeling of, I do not feel valued in this country. I don't matter. My life is not as important as other people in this country. From a humanitarian standpoint and a civility standpoint, that should be terribly troubling for every one of us in this country. Exactly. This case did not create those emotions. That exactly. comes from decades and decades of people feeling like they are treated differently in this country and it is just resurrected because of this terrible tragedy. Exactly. There's David. another point, however, that we're seeing on Twitter. These are the direct threats that are coming. These are the calls for violence. These are the videos that are now showing up in social media and new media from Portland to Oakland to others where people are calling for violence, murder, and this is not what our system's about. Now, you can talk about why people feel a certain way. Those are all subjective feelings to a great degree for all of us. But if we stick within the issue at hand, the evidence that's presented, the case law as it stands, and we deal with it, I don't have a dog in this hunt. As mm -hmm. I said, I wish these two had never met. Mm -hmm. But what we have seen since the community relations service went down there, we now have the FOIA requests that show they were involved, the Department of Justice unit involved in leading rallies and funding and facilitating rallies against Zimmerman. Now that we see that we have well, Al David, Sharpton, if I could Jesse if I could Jackson just and others pushing a narrative, we have to pay attention to that end of it also. David, if I could, if I could just jump in just with a quick fact check on the, on the idea of these commun community relations service, what, what the Justice Department says, and you can believe it or not, but what the Justice Department says is that those uh, organizations were there to try to keep the peace, not to gin up anger. I mean, th th that's the explanation from the Justice Department. And if you look at the documents uh, f that the Judicial Watch foiled uh, through the F Freedom of Information Act, there isn't anything that contradicts that. I'm sorry. I just, mm -hmm. please, and Jake, please, also... David said that um, he, he saw a lot of tweets about, you know, people wanting to protest and outrage over the verdict. And there have been just as many tweets that said nasty remarks about Trayvon and that he got what he deserved and that he was the one who both did a crime. Wrong. So let's be fair in the analysis wrong. of the tweets and make sure that we put out the other side as well of how many people are out there saying that Trayvon got just what he deserved. So there's equal amount of anguish and nasty tweeting going on on both sides. There is a yeah, lot of ugliness on both sides. I think we can all agree that nobody should be calling for violence against George Zimmerman and nobody should be saying that Trayvon Martin got what he deserved. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we can, this panel Agreed. can come to an agreement on that, yeah. if nothing else. Yeah. I, I do want to play um, this public service announcement from uh, Broward County, uh, Florida, and, and get your reactions to that. One second. It's Raise your up voice and not your hands. We need to stand together as one. No cuffs, no guns. Let's give violence a rest because we can easily end up arrested. I know your patience will be tested, but, but law, law enforcement, enforcement has your back. back. Let's back up and choose not to act up and deputies are with us, so no need to act up. Let it roll off your shoulders. It's water off your back. Don't lack composure. Because so this is from Broward County, Florida, not Seminole County where the Sanford uh, uh, courthouse is and where uh, Mr. Zimmerman was tried, but uh, it is in light of, uh, of what happened. Uh, let's just uh, go down the line. Uh, Mo, we'll start with you. Your reaction to a public service announcement like that. Why, why is that needed? Um, you know, because of the idea that people are going to act out. I mean, I know in this country that has happened before, so I thought it was a great attempt at trying to do something. I don't know that I love the rap aspect of it and all that. Like, it had to be, uh, you know, done in a way that, you know, rap kids would get it, which, again, like, more stereotypes, more... But listen, I, I can move past that because I'm glad that they, there was an attempt to do something to keep the peace, and I think it's been relatively peaceful. I think that people have acted great today. I've been watching the coverage, and I haven't seen anything negative nasty going on and I think tonight is going to be time for parents to talk to their kids for families to come together and spend some time together trying to digest all of this okay I want to get a reaction 
from, from David uh, and Buck, but before I do, I just want to read the statement from the Department of Justice that just came out seconds ago and actually get your reactions to that. As the department first acknowledged last year, we have an open investigation uh, into the death of Trayvon Martin, the Department of Justice's criminal section of the Civil Rights Division, the United States Attorney's Office for the Middle District of Florida, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation continue to evaluate the evidence generated during the federal investigation as well as the evidence and testimony from the state trial. Experienced federal prosecutors will determine whether the evidence reveals a prosecutable violation of any of the limited federal criminal civil rights statutes within our jurisdiction and whether federal prosecution is appropriate in accordance with the department's policy governing successive federal prosecution following the state trial. Uh, shorthand for that is uh, they are looking into this. David, your reaction? Well, if they're looking into that, then I think that's fair for the Department of Justice. Now, the question I would ask is, why don't they apply that same measure to many other cases when it comes to civil rights violations in the other direction of the black-white dynamic or any other dynamic? The problem we have here is that we have this constant blacks are the constant victims, whites are the constant aggressors. Instead of dealing with the issues as they are, how sad is it when you ask about the video that in our society we have to put out a video? It's understandable in this situation where you have such a highly charged situation that you want to put out a message to people to calm down. But I've talked to members in the community over and over in the past 17 months. They want peace. They want this to be processed. This should have been a local law enforcement issue. Instead, it's become a national story when there are many other stories that, frankly, are just as tragic mm -hmm. and by the numbers even more so as in Chicago. Those are not being addressed. Buck, what, I want to get your reaction. What I like about the video is the diversity in the video. If you look at, there are different types of people in there, different races, probably different religions, if I were to make an assumption. And that is a fundamental issue that this country is struggling with, is we are not really getting to know different types of people. We are living among the same type of people, and we are not truly developing intimate, trusting, meaningful relationships with people across racial lines. And without that happening, a lot of this will not change in our country. And I believe that we are in a national crisis relative to race relations in this country. And if you're looking for something to do tonight, America, think about, what, think about your pool of people, your friends, mm -hmm. And you think about how many people of difference are in that group and how many do you have at your home on a consistent basis over for dinner? How many do you ask for advice? And that will give you some insight around just truly how inclusive we are in this nation. For me, that has been a fundamental difference in my own life. Once I began to get to know different types of people, my life got better. And I assume that if we can do that across the country, the country will get better. You know, Jake, can, I've got to take can... issue with this in one quick moment. Okay. Blacks represent 12% of the population. Let me ask you, are you counting to make sure you have 12% of blacks represented, the right amount of blacks, of Hispanics, the right amount of Asians, the right amount of women, the right amount of seniors or whatever? This is that premise that somehow a, a forced diverse picture makes you more diverse and more accepting of others. I disagree with you. It means that I am beginning to understand and have a different perspective of what, about what different types of people experience in this country. And without that experience, I'm left to my own stereotypes. I'm left to my own belief system. And that is a fundamental issue in this country. Sure. Mo, I'm gonna, Mo, I'm gonna, I gotta, mean if I could just... Is that you can ignore that you're black. Or that Mo, you can join you... a political organization and then pretend that black people are just victims because it's in their heads. Or I want you to know, David, that possibly you, you, you are a black man that could have a black son that could be Trayvon. Regardless of whether you're in the well, Tea Party or you believe to deal with those issues or whatever. It, does, it, it is an issue in this country and we need to start to talk about it and embrace Embrace it as such. This is just another example of racial problems in America. Okay, just like at the Oscars, just like at the Oscars, we're putting in some music for a polite uh, exit. Thank you so much. We're going to have more of you guys debating, I believe, later in the afternoon. A great panel. I'm sure we could talk about this for an hour, and probably there's an executive somewhere making plans for that right now. This was such a great conversation, so thank you so much.